Since the formation of the Bowl Alliance and subsequent Bowl Championship Series, no team from a non-automatic qualifying conference had been selected to play in a BCS Bowl game. NCAA Division I football is the only NCAA sport without an official NCAA organized tournament to determine its champion. For over 120 years, college football national champions have been determined by national media and coaches polls. The BCS in 2004 consisted of four bowl games, the Rose, Fiesta, Orange, and Sugar Bowls, with the national championship game rotating each year to a different bowl. The eight teams to play in those bowls were the champions from the six automatic qualifying BCS conferences. They were the SEC, Pac-10, Big Ten, ACC, Big East, and Big 12. Besides the conference champions, Two at-large teams were selected for the remaining two spots. Due to rising political and legal pressure, the BCS had added a clause in the selection process to allow teams from non-automatic qualifying conferences the possibility of qualifying for an at-large berth. For a mid-major team to obtain an invitation, it would have to be ranked sixth or higher in the BCS poll at the end of the regular season. That condition presented an almost insurmountable hurdle for a non-AQ team to be ranked higher than the champions from the six BCS conferences. Tulane in 1998 and Marshall in 1999 both went undefeated, yet both were denied an invitation to a BCS bowl game. Those snubs demonstrated how unlikely it would be for any mid-major team to bust through the BCS glass ceiling. After the Wyoming game, the U's were ranked seventh in both the AP and more importantly, the BCS poll one spot below the necessary sixth rank required by the BCS. The last game of the regular season was against the hated in-state rival 40 miles south of Salt Lake City, BYU. Nicknamed the Holy War, the intensity of the rivalry was first apparent in the first athletic event between the two schools. In 1895, Brigham Young Academy in Utah first competed in a baseball game. The contest ended in a scoreless tie, and there was a bench-clearing brawl. After arriving in Utah, Urban Meyer added his log to the intense rivalry fire by refusing to say the words Brigham Young University or BYU. He referred to the Cougars as the team down south, infuriating the BYU faithful. That's the game. That's a game to beat the other opponent. It does not matter. And I know it's this, they feel the same way. Playing that rivalry game is just uh, it's something that every player looks forward to. Urban loves college football so much. As soon as he came in, he, he learned everything he could about that rivalry. Regionally, it's as good a rivalry as I've ever been around, I think, you know, because I got to coach in many, many rivalries in my career. And that's one of the great rivalries. Uh, two very successful programs over the years. And I mean, a lot of hatred in that game. And I didn't realize. There's so much energy and hate and what else can I say with that game that I can't even, I can't talk about it with you without really getting the chills. But this was, this is a rivalry game that is uh, gone on for years and those that play in the rivalry know how special it is. All week long, it's just a different week. Uh, we treat rivalry games a lot different than we treat any other game. Um, and you know, you get the highlight film going every day of practice, coming in the weight room, it's always in there and uh, we just treat it completely different. The Holy War is a highly anticipated event in the state of Utah. Meyer emphasized the game's importance to players who may not have been familiar with the rivalry's tradition. First day of training camp, I remember having a whole a whole meeting set aside for letting the kids that were recruited out of state know exactly what this rivalry meant to the state to the state of Utah. The clock in the gym it ticked down every minute, uh, every second to that game, and so even starting at first of the year, um, it was at the forefront of our game, even though it was the last game of the season. Urban created a rivalry with BYU. There's always been this rivalry. He didn't know about it, so he came in and he created his own. And that was something we started talking about, you know, way back in the spring. 
With the possibility of Utah being the first mid-major team to crash the BCS, the game drew national attention. The game was televised nationally on ESPN2, and BCS Bowl representatives were in attendance. Urban Meyer wanted to access one media event to highlight the game's importance. Uh, but as the game rolled around, I remember I called Kirk Herbstreit, a good friend of mine actually from Ohio State, and I said, you have to, because I think Auburn was playing Alabama. And I said, we need to get game day out there, please, for recruiting. You know, I just kept thinking about the city deserves this and we deserve this. And uh, he put me on the phone with Lee Fitting, who was the producer. And I was begging him. And I guaranteed him 15,000 people out there. You know, it's going to be real early because we're out in the mountain time zone. And uh, sure enough, I got the phone call saying they're coming. Well, at that point, the end was in sight. When ESPN game day came out, it was unlike anything this state had seen. ESPN game day is as big as it gets in terms of previewing your game. I felt that there was more a sense of excitement. It was by far the best game day up until that point uh, with that, how many fans we had and uh, just how crazy it was and the, the energy and the passion. In front of an energized, sold-out crowd, the prospect of historic change for mid-major teams across the country depended on the outcome of this game. Over the previous decade, the Holy War had been intense and competitive, with the margin of victory for either team being decided by a touchdown or less. Yes, we knew what was at stake, you know, going to a BCS Bowl game and, and what could happen if, if we won. There were a lot of nerves, there was a lot of uh, pressure on that game for us. That's what you want to play for as a player, as a kid growing up, to, to be in that kind of atmosphere in, in, the, in the games that mean so much. The motivation, the preparation was impeccable. There was no issues with, the maturity of the team was incredible. It, that's just the way it is. If you're a University of Utah football player and it's time to play BYU, you know it's, it's time for business. It's game time. BYU tied the score at 14 with 5.45 remaining in the second quarter. Should BYU pull off the upset, it would certainly derail Utah's BCS busting aspirations. With the game on the line, the Utes left nothing to chance. So it was called Blitz at Nine, and that was in place. That fake punt play was in place from the beginning since summer camp. And so we practiced it every single day, practiced it every single day, like we were going to do it the next game. They had every trick in the bag, and if they needed to use it, they used it. Um, fake punt that I actually knew was coming. And I was actually caught off guard, because every week I was like, hey coach, are we gonna actually run it? Or are you just doing this for fun? And he was like, there'll be a time. I was right next to Coach Meyer, because I was, I was on their sideline a lot. And right before they ran a fake punt, I heard him yell for Bo Nagy. He, he said, Bo, 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 get over here. Bo Nagy, he was a guy that was a journeyman player, one of my favorite players of all time, is committed, incredible family, the guy that loves Utah. And, and Coach Meyer looks at me in the eyes and he's like, you ready? The call was blitz at nine, and they were actually in punch safe. And I said, you really calling this finally tonight? And he said, yep. I said, he's like, are you ready? I said, absolutely, I'm ready. I knew the fake was coming, Bo was right in front of me. And I'm saying, check reverse, check reverse. The message didn't get all the way across and they ran the reverse and they got a first down. I just remember him coming off the sideline and he was forever grateful. We still, you know, he's still, when he texts me, he signs his name, Blitz at night. And it's still just a great memory with Coach Meyer and myself. I mean, I bring it up all the time. And every time, every time I text him, uh, I, I sign it not with my name, but Blitz at nine. In the second half, the U's turned on the heat. Overwhelming BYU in every phase of the game. Utah outscored BYU by 24 points in the final 30 minutes. As the game ended, Rice Eccles Stadium was awash in celebration. This is amazing, first Never. time any team outside the BCS has made it in. For the BCS Busters, baby, whoa! With the release of the final BCS poll, the Utes had secured the coveted sixth spot, ensuring them an invitation to a BCS bowl game. After the poll's release, there was considerable speculation surrounding the Utes' bowl destination. Most likely, the Fiesta Bowl, a slim chance it could be the Sugar Bowl scouts from both games were here and told me they would love to have this Ute team. They love this high-powered, exciting offense, and they love these fans. We were pretty sure that the Fiesta Bowl, and I think there was an order of choosing, and we knew the Fiesta Bowl 
gave us a pretty indication they would have a choice, uh, a chance to choose over us. You know, Texas obviously has the bigger name and, you know, bigger following. So it was really a fiesta ball almost all the way with a little bit of Rose Bowl. None of it mattered to us. You know, I, I could have cared less if it was a Fiesta Bowl, Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl. We were going to the BCS. We were the first team to ever do that. And we really was, were more concerned about who we were going to play. There's just such strong alliances between bowls and conferences. And the SEC and the Sugar Bowl are tight. And I think they really wanted Auburn there. And Auburn really wanted to be there. And they didn't really want a Mountain West team. And the way the order worked out, they didn't have to take them. Coach Urban Meyer spending about two and a half hours last evening with Notre Dame officials. The Fighting Irish making no secret Urban Meyer is on their short list, if not atop their list of candidates for their open coaching job. With the meteoric rise of Utah football, Urban Meyer became a prime candidate for several high-profile coaching jobs across the country. The increased media attention and speculation became an unwelcome distraction. That was tough. There was uh, a lot of fragmentation. Uh, Coach Meyer had taken the, uh, the Florida job. Coach Sanford had taken the UNLV job. The staff was splitting in you know four or five different directions. And so I remember mid-December, I think it was two days before he announced he was going to Florida, going up to his office and just saying, hey, you know, Coach, what's the deal? Just wanting to, uh, you know, talk about my scholarship. And he just kind of stops me. He's like, he just looks at me. He's like, he's like so what do you think? Notre Dame or Florida? 